Hey guys, my name is Doug with infotainment.com. Today we're working on the 2019 and up Ram 1500 truck, the new body truck. Today we have an exciting new upgrade for you guys. This is the 100% factory remote start kit for the 2019 and higher and newer Ram trucks. Now we take it a step further here at infotainment.com. Not only do we provide remote start kits, but we will also include a tailgate shock so you can, from your remote, lower your tailgate with the press of a button. So today we're gonna show you guys how this whole kit installs. We'll also show you about programming the truck for the feature. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. To begin the install of the remote start, you're gonna to need to replace your factory hood latch and add a wire. Um, Basically, that's going to run to your BCM. Um, in order to gain access to this hood latch, you got to remove this whole top plastic shroud. And all you need is either a flathead screwdriver or a panel tool. And if you don't have um, a little magnetic tray, you can grab your um, fuse box cover, flip it upside down, and that way you can store all of your little clips so you don't knock them all over the place and lose them. Right, if you've never removed one of these clips before, it's just a two-piece clip where the center pops up and uh, allows you to pull it straight out of that hole. Then to put it back in, drop it in, press it down, and that'll secure it back in place. All right, once all your clips are removed, you can pull your shroud up and set it aside. All right, to remove this latch, you have two 10 millimeter bolts holding that on, one on either end here. Now with your latch free, you're gonna to need to pop this, um, this cable out of your latch here so you can put your new latch on. So you're gonna to need to pull back on the latch assembly here, or this little latch mechanism, and then you can take your cable out of there. Now once this is free, you can pop your clip free and take your latch off. We'll grab our new latch and we will put the cable on. All right, now we can bolt this back in. All right, now this hood latch adds a hood pin to your setup, and this is where this harness comes into play. Uh, so basically when you pop your hood, um, it's like a safety feature that the remote start will shut off or will not allow, allow you to start the vehicle if the hood is up. So this is why um, we need this hood latch to be installed. All right, now for your wiring, uh, where I'm gonna run this is up underneath the radiator support here, or the core support. Run it around and plug it in. And then I'm going to run this wire along the inside here. There's another harness that I'm just going to zip tie it to. And following your hood latch cable here, 
where it's mounted, I'm gonna zip tie it along this hood latch cable and work my way over to this factory grounding point here. And this is where I'm gonna ground our switch. And then I'm gonna continue on with this wire into the vehicle. All right, and from this point, you're gonna grab that 10 mil and uh, pull off your factory ground here. All right, slide your hood pin ground over and tighten this 10 millimeter back up. All right, now we can take the rest of this harness and run it into the truck. I'm gonna be running it around the battery box here, up underneath that power cable. And there's some other wires underneath here. I'm gonna zip tie right to those wires. All right, from this point, you can go ahead and reinstall your shroud under your hood, put all the clips back in, put your fuse box back on, or your fuse box cover back on, and uh, what we're gonna do is get a fish wire and run it up from the uh, cab of the truck through the grommet, and we're gonna catch this wire on this side and pull it through into the interior of the truck. All right, now let's grab our fish wire and pull this wire into the vehicle. All right, to run this fish wire into the cab, we're gonna utilize this big factory grommet right here. On your truck, right above here, you may have a clutch plate that you can drill through. Uh, it's made out of plastic, really easy to drill through, but our truck, we don't have that. So pulling this big flap to the side, we have a grommet there. You can put a little, um, a little slice in there with a razor blade. And then we'll take our fish wire and run it right through there up into the engine bay. All right, there we go. Let's go catch that on the, uh, on the other side. All right, now that we have our zip tie ran up into our engine bay, I'm gonna continue feeding this wire towards the firewall. I'm gonna come up underneath all of these harnesses over here. There we go. So our wire is nicely tucked and out of the way. And now I'm gonna tape our wire onto this zip tie and pull it into the cab. Right, and leave a little ear on there so you can free that wire pretty easily on the other side from the tape. For our hood pin connection, what we did is we got a BCM to show you this uh, on the table here a little bit easier because you can't really even hardly see it with your own eyes when you're looking up in there. But basically, the BCM is under your dash. If this was your steering wheel, it's down and to the left. Uh, so from looking up in there, the plug that you need for that hood pin wire is this top plug right here. And basically, to remove this plug, your hand would be reaching up from the bottom. 
you have to depress this and push up on it at the same time. It's um, pretty easy with it out here on the on the bench, but up underneath there, um, you may struggle a little bit if you can get another hand in there, kind of press that down with a with a flathead screwdriver. That would be best just because it's so tight in there. But once you have this plug out, we need pin number 11 on this plug. So the way to view that pin is basically you have um, some clips holding this together here. You're gonna wanna separate it and pull down at the same time. There you go. And uh, this will slide out of there giving us access to pin 11. On your harness here, it's actually um, labeled. So you can see those numbers there. This is 12. If you spin this over, you'll see 24 here, 13 here. The one you're looking for is number 11. It's a violet blue wire. So if you go, you see number 12. Right before it would be number 11. This is the, the wire basically. Um, if you have a wire in here, you're going to need to either remove this wire and repin it with the wire that we just ran. Or if your kit comes with a posi uh, tap, you can leave this connected and just connect the posi tap. Um, for right now, I'm going to be removing the wire at the BCM, which that's also pretty straightforward if you just push down a little bit on that pin, you can release the little clip that's in there and pull straight out. Just like that. And that'll free up this little cavity here and you can get your new wire and slide it in in the same orientation and it'll clip into place. Once you have that connected um, in there, you can slide your cover back on. Let me do that now and then press this back into the BCM. Now with the lever in the upright position, as you push down, it'll start to swing. If you swing it the rest of the way, that'll lock it into place. And I always like to give it a nice tug, make sure it's fully seated in there. But yeah, that's all it is that you're gonna be doing um, on the BCM. And we'll go take care of this underneath the dash. All right, so getting to the more difficult part of the installation, um, we need to remove your back seats. So there's a couple of modules that need to go in. One's in the headliner, uh, and the other one is right behind your back seats against your rear firewall. So probably should have said before you start this job at all that um, there's a couple of tools that most people don't have. Uh, one is a reverse Torx. It's a uh, E12 is the size that you're gonna need to remove these outside most um, seat bolts and you're going to need a T50 and this is to remove your seat belt uh, bolt on the side of your uh, seat pillar there. Uh, besides that you're just going to need an 18 millimeter wrench um, or socket. It's in there pretty good all these bolts. There's a um, thread locker on all of these bolts so if you have something electric or air tools this will be your best friend uh, to break everything loose um, I would recommend just a regular ratchet, break all the bolts loose, get them kind of freed up, and then you can use your power tools on them. But yeah, let's go ahead and start by removing your seat bolts. All right, once you get your last one out, um, you can actually take a look and see all that pink um, stuff on there. That's the thread locker. So that's basically the stuff that you're going to be working through in the beginning. Working towards the rear of your seats, you got four 18 millimeter bolts holding down um, the brackets back there. Yeah, so even though there's only four holding on your seat, there's one in the center here that's connected to your seat belt. Uh, this also needs to be pulled out because when you lift your seat to pull it out, this is actually strapped in between your seat. It's not going to allow you to pull it out, so you're going to want to pull this one as well. And we'll break these free before we before we go with our impact wrench here.
All right, once you have all five of those removed, there's nothing left uh, holding your seats on. But this seat belt right here, you're gonna wanna pull it through your seat just so it's out of the way when you go and uh, lift your seat up, you're not gonna be pulled on or snag anything on your way out. Once your seats are free, if you got problems with heavy things, uh, you may wanna grab a friend here. Um, it's not super heavy, but it is kind of awkward. But basically what you're gonna do is lift up on the rear seat. And what you're trying to do, you're gonna lift these up out of these hooks here. So that's all you're trying to achieve, is just pulling up on that seat. And once you have it up, you can pull it out of the way and get it out of the truck. All right, we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. Just pull straight up and remove the seat from the truck. All right, once your seats are out, you're gonna see these three little Christmas tree pops here. Uh, you are going to pull these three out and then this plastic cap right here also, you're gonna wanna remove. So we'll start with that actually. And I believe it pops from the side. Kind of lifts up and you can get that out of the way and there's actually a, a cut in there that you can just pull that off and we'll pull these off all right now you should be able to pull down rear panel here and this is the module that you're trying to gain access to right here so this is the module that we're going to swap out for our new one and as you can see this one doesn't have that antenna line on there and this one does you can grab your same panel tool and pull this away from the rear firewall Plug this module. With your new module here, you'll notice it's got an arrow. Obviously, put that arrow in the yep position and plug your plugs back in. Make sure it clips into place. All right, we can grab our pops that we removed earlier. Slide it back in. All right, with your new module in place, you can grab your newly supplied antenna line here, plug that in, and I'm just gonna zip tie this right along these factory wires and go right up to the C-pillar right there and uh, work my way up into, your head, into the headliner. When you reach the end here, uh, in order to access where you need to run this wire, you're going to have to remove your C-pillar panels. To remove these panels, we're going to start with the door sill here. Pop this up, set this aside, and then we got the bottom seatbelt bolt here, which is a T50. A little spacer here with a metal locking clip. Make sure not to lose that stuff. Usually it stays stuck onto the bolt, but if yours is like this one and it pops off, just make sure to keep that for reinstallation. Now we'll pull our weather stripping back and we can pop this panel free. You might need a panel tool. Or you can kind of muscle it and pop it free. And for this panel up here, you have a T20 Torx underneath your airbag cover um, or your airbag little indication thing here. Um, you have two more up on the 
headliner here, you have to pull these off as well. These are also T20s. And we're also gonna be pulling our um, hooks off. So let's pull that off now. Got a little flat head, you can pop that cover off. From here, we can continue running our antenna line up your factory wiring harness up here on your C-pillar. Once you get your zip tie right up to the top here, what we're going to need to do is pull your clothes hook or this little hook down. Take this out of here. And from this point, you should be able to pull back your weather stripping, pull this down far enough to access where you need to access. What the uh, instructions would have you do is actually drop the entire headliner and this is not necessary. So basically right behind this hump here, it's kind of above this mounting point, is a spot on your headliner on your roof that has two offset holes. This module is gonna come with a couple of push pins here and it just pretty much pushes up in there. And then you can plug your wire in and put everything back in. So. Uh, we'll try and get some footage of it for you, but we're just going to drop it down far enough so I can reach my arm in there and plug this in. Alright, once you push that in place, you can put your headliner back up. All right, once your panels are back in, 
uh, and your weather strippings back on, we can grab our seats and throw these back in. When you're grabbing the seat, be mindful that those brackets stick off, those metal uh, mounting brackets. So when you're pulling it into the vehicle, if you have to, rest it up against the, against the floor before you set it in there, do that. Just watch out for your painted surfaces. Right. Once you get it in here, you have those two loops that you're going to have to hook the rear over. And you'll know you're in there if you try and pull it and it doesn't come out. Line up the holes on the bottom and we can throw our bolts back in. And make sure whatever um, little brackets or seatbelt um, things that you took off, make sure you put those back on. And with all your seat bolts, I like to give it a, a little snug by hand just to make sure that they're all the way tightened. All right, and let's do the same thing on the passenger side. All right, on your passenger rear here, you're gonna grab that seatbelt that you pulled through, and you're gonna drop it right down in the middle. Slide that over, line up your holes, and we can tighten this side down too. Right, once your seats are in place, you can put your seat belts back up through the seat. Pull your seat down and that completes your install. All right, we're gonna be installing this tailgate assist. Um, optionally, this may come with your kit and uh, if it does, it'll allow your tailgate to drop assisted with your newly installed remote start. Um, and this is a super easy install. You got two T20s holding your tail, uh, your tail light on. And pull your tail light straight back. And from here, we'll actually unplug the tail light just to make it easier for us. Right, we'll set our tail light aside. With your tailgate, assist here you have two connection points they're just two little ball joints here and these just basically snap on if you just line up the hole with the with the ball and part, uh, press it in these clips will automatically snap into place but if you hold it next to it you'll see it's bigger or it's longer uh, and you won't be able to do both sides so easy way to do it snap it in on the bottom That'll snap into place and then lift your tailgate until the other ball lines up. And that'll just drop into place. Once your prop is snapped into place, grab your tail light and simply reinstall it the way you removed it. And there's a couple of pins back here. You want to make sure you line those up. All right, now in this particular truck, we did install the tailgate shock, which is an awesome feature, which allows that tailgate to come down slowly. But with our remote start kit, 
you will get that button on the fob so you can remotely allow your tailgate to come down by just pressing the button two times. So that's really helpful whenever you've got a bunch of stuff in your hands or you're loading wood or something, you're coming up to the truck. It's great to be able to press that button twice and have that come down automatically. All right, guys, another easy to install factory upgrade from infotainment.com. This is 100% genuine Mopar factory remote start. So we showed you exactly how to install it. Let me show you how it works. So you'll have a button on your remote uh, to actually start the vehicle. You just press that two times and it will start your truck. We carry so many upgrades similar to this, 100% factory at infotainment.com. So come check us out. Thanks for watching.